this is Paul Palmer and I'd like to talk today about remote audits. So what do you mean, what does it mean to do a remote audit? Well, of course, they're off, off site. Now a quality audit in the pharmaceutical industry is, is normally on site. So you go around and the first thing you do is look at what's going on in the, in the uh, manufacturing facility. You start with goods in, you work through all the way to goods out and you look at all the systems and processes and online as they're happening in real time. Now through the pandemic, there's been a large proportion of these audits have been conducted remotely. But there's always a risk within a remote audit that you wouldn't spot something that you'd normally look at. So what I find is when you're doing a remote audit, you need to plan more thoroughly than you would necessarily have to do when you're doing an on-site audit. An on-site preparation is usually about half a day. But what I found it for remote audits is that there's quite a lot of time involved in the preparation, making sure that you ask for the right sort of things in advance, the documents to review, the site master file as usual. But the things that you would normally pick up when you're on site and understand the structure of the documentation, you need to really do that before you go. Because then you can ask for things in advance to review remotely and it shares, saves time with the sharing of documentation because often they if they're in a, a paper format it might take a few hours to get the document back to you so rather than waiting half an hour maybe on site you're waiting most of the day well that means you can't do a remote audit in one day very easily and mhra i've seen are doing remote audits often over a full week and that's to allow for the fact that the documentation the the provision time takes longer. Now they have a, a system they use, um, they request joint sharing in a set location, it's shared into that location and they review and give feedback um, as part of the audit uh, online in real time. Now if you're on site you do that at the end of the day in the closing meeting of course and, and they do the same. But what I find with a remote audit is it's good to actually do the explanations as you go along because I find that remote audits, it's quite easy to misunderstand and misinterpret what's been provided. And I've seen that in, in audits that I've attended as supporting uh, the audit rather than actually for being the auditor, that it, it's easy for them to misinterpret or misunderstand the, the information given and just as easy for you to misunderstand. So it's really important to make sure that you're clear in your explanations of what you're talking about. And what I found often is to actually share it on the screen, even though you may be there video at both sides and, and talking, but sharing something on the screen as you work through it helps the other party to understand what it is you're looking at. And then maybe if there's potentially a language barrier and, and they're talking primarily another language to you, but you're actually doing the audit in your own language, then you'll find quite often that when they do the sharing, or when I should I say when you're sharing and it's their document that you're sharing, then it becomes more clear to them what it is you're talking about. And you can use your screen share to highlight different parts, even if they don't have the bandwidth to be able to offer a real live service and, and tour of the facility, which actually I found is probably the best way to do it. But they, if they've provided you the videos in advance, maybe they've got a slow connection and they then you can look at them on your screen and they just see the, the screen share. And in this way, you can say to them, well, I've got a question about this particular part, highlight it and say, well, can you explain this please? And then you, of course, you've got your offline notes to your make. But then what's the problem with this? Well, okay, so maybe they don't show you something that you would see while you're there. You can't ask something there and then, maybe for them to lift something up so you can see contamination. So that's another risk. But you've got your analysis one on import. So assuming that these are a long way away, because if it was local, why wouldn't you go on site and do the, do the audit on site? So where did we get to? Well, we, we thought about what we're doing in, in real time. We can't do the real time stuff. So we need to look at more at qualification. We need to look at validation. We need to look in detail at the calibration procedures, at the preventative maintenance, about the activities that they should be doing 
as a reputable manufacturer and supplier to your company. Now, do I recommend only remote audits? No, not really. There's a lot of things that you can cover during remote audits, yes. But when they provide you with a video and you cannot go around in real time and look at the evidence, you've got, the, you've got a higher risk. So I do recommend that you support your remote audits with on-site audits as soon as they're available. I know the pandemic is delaying these, but hopefully we'll be able to go soon. That's Paul Palmer, just talking about remote audits. Talk to you soon.